Nothing compared to my own back home in Manchester, however. I assume there's nothing here to compare to England, sir. Quite right. So, you found him where? At the Cedars. On the Sound, at Huntington Bay. Yes, he had spent the night at the Widow Chichester's tavern. And you found this paper on his person? The sole of his shoe. This writing's Latin. I think you'll find the numbers scribbled there represent the number of troops at our garrison. Bring in the prisoner. Thomas Marshall. Sir. Do you always drink so early in the day, or is what I smell just residue from the night before? I would like to inform the general. I am employed directly by the British Ministry and am independent of your authority. And although I do not need to answer your question, I drink when it pleases me, and it pleases me all the time. You may be independent of my authority, but I find you a disgrace to a British uniform. And I'm going to inform the British Ministry, your employer, of your behavior here in New York. <coughs> Untie his hands. Uh. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I caught a cold. You are Nathan Hale, Captain under Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Knowlton of the Connecticut Rangers. Mm, the same. The Rangers are camped on Harlem Heights. What were you doing at the Widow Chichester's out of uniform last night? Are you sure you want to know, sir? Of course, I want to know. It is clear what you were doing there, Hale. We found this paper on your person. I found that paper at the tavern last night on the bar. I put it in my shoe with some other pieces of paper I found there. The others must have fallen out. Why did you put it in your shoe? To keep out the rain. Give me the truth, son. Why were you at the tavern? I was going home. Going home? Back to New London. General, do you know what it's like on the other side? We have no money, no food, no clothes. I've had this damn cold for weeks. The, the other night, I was sitting at camp, starving to death, when it occurred to me that General Washington isn't going to win any war against the British troops. <laughs> oh, General, I am an educated man. I know that every political idea is a variation of another just like it. I'm not looking to die just because Ben Franklin wants to get in the history books. You know what I mean? It's not like you're French. No. If we could just clear up this misunderstanding about that paper, I would very much like to get on my way back to New London before the Rangers come looking for me. Get him a pair of shoes. Thank you. And uh, a pair of stockings, too, if you could. You don't mean to say that you intend to allow this coward, this spy, free. Well, what is he? He's either a very clever spy or an honest coward. Either way, I would prefer the Connecticut Rangers deal with the matter. General, we are winning the war. The last thing we need right now is an issue. Sir, fire has been seen coming from east of Broadway. This is the rebels doing, isn't it? The British soldiers pretending to be rebels. The prisoner is to remain here in the greenhouse until I decide what to do with him. It always pleases me to hang a mama's boy. Now, what did you do before the war, Provost Marshal? Fought in another one. Mm, quite right. Somehow I don't see you around children. I bet you're the sort of man who visits the Tower of London on holiday. Nostalgic for all those wonderful executions you made. <clears throat> Suppose you didn't notice that my hands were tied? <clears throat> Stranger Cunningham! The prisoner was making an attempt to escape, sir. Help him to his feet. The prisoner is still under my jurisdiction. You'll hand him over to me sooner or later, General. It's only a matter of time. Not a very cheery fellow. Your rebels have set fire to a tavern on the wharf near Whitehall Slip. Five hundred buildings are aflame. I had nothing to do with your fire. That may be so, but you have to take responsibility for it. Feed him. Thank you. Your 
name, Sergeant? John Graham. It's a good name for a soldier. Is this your first campaign? Yes. Mine too. It's bloody awful. Since this damn war began, I've been shot at, smacked around, caught the damnedest cold, killed the poor bloke, and now the provost marshal wants to hang me. Who the hell said there was any glory in this? You are a strange one. War is just a sign of impatience. You say you killed a man? It happened during a battle they're calling the Battle of Long Island. I didn't see any battle, and I didn't see Long Island. All I saw was a bunch of scared young men shouting at each other to stop themselves from running in the opposite direction. Oh, I haven't killed a rebel yet. Take your time. There's plenty around. But be careful one doesn't kill you first. Thank you for your concern. Son, can I ask you a question? Does anyone know I'm here? Huh. I believe it's the talk of the day, actually. They say you are a great spy and were sent to the city by Washington himself. <laughs> Not really. Hey. Right. Dread. It does sound awful. How can a general release me if the people in the city think I'm a spy? It is war. What can you expect from them? You see? There goes damn war again. Thank you, John. You've been most kind. today, hmm? <laughs> Good. You have a visitor. A visitor? Uh, and show him in. It is a she, sir. A she? Well, hello. How are you feeling? Well, uh, my nose is sort of stuffed up, but uh, it actually feels better in the greenhouse here. Thank you, Sergeant. I brought you a pie. Wonderful. I haven't eaten this well since the war broke out. How are they treating you? Outside of an occasional beating, I'm actually doing fine. It's damn British. Yeah. What can you expect? They're stuck on that wretched little island. Hmm. What's your name, may I ask? Alice Adams. Is that so? And who are you? I am your fiance. Delightful. Pretty. Certainly not a farm girl. I have good taste. Keep your mouth shut and sit down. Oh, sit down, shut up. Everybody's telling me what to do. I'm tired of this. Now, Alice Adams, or whoever you are, will you please tell me what you're doing here, what this masquerade has to do with me? General Washington sent me. I am with the rebels. So, now Washington has women fighting for him? What next? Household pets? We have to kill everybody to be happy? Are you Nathan Hale of the Rangers? The first to stand up at the new London courthouse to volunteer to fight? That's me. Were you there? No. But I heard all about you. You are a brave man. I was a brave man. I've since come to my senses. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm now an intelligent coward. I was running back home when the British caught me. I don't believe you. I'm sorry if you went to any great trouble coming here. But I can't make everyone happy. Thank you so much for the pie. If you'll excuse me... I'll go back to being a content and happy prisoner. You can't send me away. The, the British are going to hang you. We just set fire to the city. Terrific. That's just dandy. Whose idea was that, Washington? Why are you being so difficult? Difficult? I am not fond of being tossed about like some puppet. Look, why don't you go back to your Mr. Washington and tell him I quit? You can't quit. Why not? You can't quit a war. Nobody won yet. Look, I am young, 
handsome, intelligent, and with a little luck, I may make a good living someday. See, I'm going to do well no matter who wins this war. What's your name again? Alice Adams. That's a good name for an angry young woman. Nathan Hale, I was sent here by General Washington, and I will proceed to complete my task. Fine. Did you volunteer for this? I did. I thought so. The general concludes that it is impossible to help you escape. Good, because I'm not going anywhere. This greenhouse is a fine place to live. General Washington wants you to admit to the British that you are a spy. He wants you to tell them that you were sent to New York to gather information for him. Right. I'll do it immediately. You will? Why not? No, I got nothing better to do than to have my neck broken in two and have my body twitch in the wind for an hour or so. But don't you see, if the British hang you, the soldiers will rally around your death. Washington needs a miracle. We all need someone to step forward and be a martyr. We're talking about my life here. I have plans for it. There are people I want to meet, places I want to see. I haven't even seen England yet. I have no interest in giving up all that just so some general could have a martyr. Don't you have any feelings? Of course I have feelings. Do you have a boyfriend somewhere? Roger. He died at Lexington. And my brother Jeffrey died at Concord. You have death all over you. No wonder you volunteered for this. Well, there's no reason to have me die, too. But we are at war, and unfortunately, people must die. But how and where can actually make a difference? Oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. In fact, I bet Washington intentionally set fire to the city so the British would hang me. Damn it, that makes me mad. Well, I have a response to both the British and the Americans, and you know what it is? Go fight the French. Leave me alone. I failed my mission. Speaking frankly, yes. In fact, in my opinion, I think you did an awful job. Should have tried a different tactic. What? Womanly charm. Stop thinking of gunpowder and think of... Amour. Amour? Hmm. Seduction. I know it's not real big here in the colonies, but... You walked in here with that on your mind. Who knows what would have happened? I am not a whore. I am a soldier. I know, but you got to stop thinking like a Puritan and think like a French girl. I know, I know. I hate the French with the... Uh, those French girls. Hey, where are you going? I, I, they haven't finished teaching about seduction here. I am going to Washington, and I'm going to tell him that it will be an insult to the American army if Nathan Hale is ever thought of as a hero. Promise? And I'm also going to tell the British not to waste the rope. You're sounding bitter, Alice Adams. They will hang you, and your death will count for nothing. No one is going to hang me, because I will not allow myself to become a victim in this war. I'm really sorry for your brother and your boyfriend. It's tragic that they died so young. Maybe the thought of old age and disease didn't appeal to them. Well, it appeals to me. It's life, I believe, and not death. You want to see me hanged so you can make me a martyr like your brother and your boyfriend. I'm sorry. I'm too selfish to throw away my life for such reasons. You have no honor. Thank you for the compliment. Without honor, I'm free. I'm no longer chained to the stupidity of being an honorable man. I'm in Eden. Be my Eve. In fact, when this is all over... Why don't you and I take a buggy ride to Willow Lake? Oh, you have to see this place in the spring. The, the trees are a deep, dark green, and the lake is as pretty as your eyes. Insane! Possibly. <laughs> but I do believe that I'm very attracted to you. I've been at war, you know. Underneath that rebel cause, you seem so tender and sweet. I sound like a poet, don't I? <laughs> You better be careful, I might write your poem. You aren't a soldier, you are a child. I came here in disguise, with no fear of losing my own life, to help you become a hero. But now, I can only say that I hope you live a long, coward's life, if that is what you want. So goodbye and farewell, I say to you. I hope we never meet again. Hey, you forgot your pie. I think I was falling in love with her. <laughs> she doesn't 
doesn't want me alive. She... she wants me dead. On your feet, Captain. After careful consideration, I have come to the conclusion that you were a spy in the employ of General Washington. It gives me no choice, therefore, but to sentence you to death. But, General, I am not a spy! You are out of uniform. You were caught with that paper. I have no other choice. Can I at least get a trial? I'll give you the satisfaction of defending yourself. Thank you. I'll return with the Provost Marshal at 8 o'clock this evening. Call this trial to order. I, General William Howe, commander of the British forces in the colonies, preside as judge and jury. This is the case of Nathan Hale. The charge is spying and the penalty is death. Provost Marshal, present your evidence. <coughs> Nathan Hale, captain of the Connecticut Rangers, was found out of uniform standing on the beach where he was sighted by a barge of British Marines. He was told to surrender or die, and he surrendered. He was taken aboard the British guard ship Halifax and searched. This piece of paper with Latin writing on it was found on his person. Captain Card of the Halifax has written down that Hale was wearing shoes with inner soles. Between the soles, he had concealed the accurate drawings of British fortifications and the number of troops defending New York. Punishment under British law for spying is death by hanging. I call for this punishment. Nathan Hale, it is the concern of this court that you have the opportunity to dispute these claims and to prove them inaccurate. Thank you, General. Um... I would like to say in my defense that my shoes did not have an inner soul. And I have no idea what the writing on that piece of paper means. I would also like to repeat to the court that I was on my way home when caught by the British Marines. I am a deserter, not a spy. I also cannot read nor write Latin. Is that all? Uh, yes, that, that is all I can say in my defense. If what you say is true, and you have no interest in this war, point out Washington's troop positions on this map. That is devious, sir. And it has nothing to do with my innocence. Well, if you point out the true positions, I should have no recourse but to believe you are not a spy and clearly not interested in the outcome of this conflict. Prove to me that you're not a spy. By proving that I'm a traitor? God bless me if I were a spy. Spies make our war bearable. Just think if we had no one courageous enough to cheat and peek to see what the other side is doing. And only if I were a spy, then I could spit in your face and die on the gallows, a courageous man. But I am not a spy, and it is wrong to suspect that I am a traitor. I am also not a soldier because I refuse to fight. If you hang me, you're hanging an innocent man. A citizen of the world. Can you read this? It looks unlike English or French to me. It's Latin. It says, you're a free man, if you can read this. I told you that I was unable to read the language. And you will not point out Washington's position on the map. I'm not without morals, sir. If you want Washington, find him yourself. 
We intend to do that. Nathan Hale. This court finds you to be a spy for the rebel side. You will be brought from the greenhouse at dawn tomorrow, where you'll be turned over to the provost marshal and hanged directly. I'm sorry for your predicament. Make sure the prisoner's comfortable. You're hanging an innocent man! General Motors Playwrights Theater continues in a moment. everything. A total safety system of over 100 different safety features that help you feel more secure when you're driving or when someone else is. Come see the changes we've made. I want a car that makes that road between fading radio stations seem safe or even familiar. Something that lets us listen by in the last chance garage and comfortably pass the time in all four time zones. Today, GM is bringing you new designs, new engines, and an all-new feeling of confidence. So don't buy a car or truck just because of where it's made. Buy it because of how it's made. And come see the changes we've made. I want a car where control isn't just in the palm of my hand, but also in the sole of my foot. Something to help keep me from skidding into whatever a slick road throws my way. Even if you don't drive like an expert, you can brake like one. Because GM offers anti-lock brakes on more cars and trucks than anyone. Come see the changes we've made. Maestro John Williams conducts the season finale of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. John Williams, live at the Hollywood Bowl, next Tuesday on A&E. We now return to Hale, the Hero. Nathan Hale. Nathan Hale. Nathan Hale. Oh, crikey. Nathan Hale! You haven't escaped, Sergeant Graham. On the contrary, I fell asleep. What time is it? No, don't tell me. I do have time before dawn, don't I? A few hours, sir. A few hours? You have a visitor. A visitor? He wants to see me. Miss Alice Adams. Oh, of course. She would want to see me now. How do I look? She will understand, sir. You're very tactful for a soldier. Please, send her in. What is it, woman? The word is out. You only have a few hours. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, I'm near death, so suddenly I'm attractive to you? No, I, I thought you would need some comfort. I do need comfort. Actually, the hug felt nice. Do try again. General Washington has a request of you. 
Washington, Washington. I'm sick of Washington. But in every camp of the rebel army, they are whispering your name. I would prefer they never heard of me. But you are a hero. I hate heroes. Heroes make other people realize their own petty failures. I don't want to do that to people. I didn't want it done to me. You don't know how much I feel for you at this moment. I am ready to fulfill any need you have. You are? For your glory and the glory of the cause. Touch me. Touch me wherever you want. The lady, are you ill? I want you, Nathan Hale. Oh, wait, wait. This is not what I had in mind. A few hours ago, when I thought I was going to live, I would have liked nothing more than to see you naked, spread out among these plants. However, with death only a few hours away, what I have in mind is not lust or passion. Then what is it? Escape. Escape? Why don't you just go wake up General Howe and let him in on my scheme? I'm sorry, but escape is impossible. Well, it is an option I am willing to attempt, considering the alternative. But think of me. What about me? What, what about you? Nathan, the moment I walked into this greenhouse, I was... I was taken aback by your smile. All the way you stand, the way you talk. I was even thrilled by the way you spoke to me. But you angered me with your insolence, and, and I went back to camp disappointed. But, but more than that, I hated you. This is what I'm saying. Clearly, I'm confused. But then, when we heard that you refused to point out Washington's positions on the map, well, I felt my heart rise up in triumph. I knew that was a mistake. So I came running here, and the moment I stood in the doorway, I knew that what I'd been feeling all that while was not hate at all. Was it? No, it was love. I love you, Nathan Hale, and I know that our time together will be short, but it will last in my memory until my dying day. But I don't want to last in your memory until your dying day. Under better circumstances, I would prefer to be in your bed until my dying day. What about the greater ideals in the world, like revolution and freedom and... Don't be a hypocrite. I'm going to be dead soon. In about two weeks, while I'm in my grave... You'll be giving your wonderful, ripe, womanly flesh to some other poor martyr this war will create. You're angry with me. Yes! Because you're going to live to the ripe old age of 82, and I'm not going to outlive these plants. But I am in love with you. And I know it seems that it is only because you are ready to die. But I will tell you now, I would prefer you live, Nathan Hale. Because I have never in my life come across a man who has thought so much about what living means. You would have made a wonderful father, loving husband, and a great man. You think so? I do. So, let's not deny the world such a bounty. John? Yes, sir? John. I'm going to pose a question to you, and I want you to answer me honestly. I will do my best as a soldier and a servant of a king. John. What are my chances of escaping this greenhouse? Tonight, sir? Tonight. I'm an excellent shot. I do not think you would get far. That figures. What if I got by you? Well, you might make it to the dock, but I doubt it. There are British soldiers everywhere in New York. Are you thinking of escaping, sir? It is a consideration. Oh, that is a disappointment. Who am I disappointing now? There's a big turnout planned. Many of the boys in the regiment are looking forward to it. They admire you for what you're doing, sir. But I'm supposed to be a spy for the other side. Oh, but everyone knows you're not, sir. You're just like one of us. You don't want to be here either. You just have to face tomorrow what we might all face on the battlefield. 
In fact, sir, if I dare say it, you're giving us all a big boost of courage to get on with it and end this war. I am? Yeah. Oh, by the by, the boys asked me to give you this. West Indies rum. Hard to come by, but we wanted you to have it on your last night. I, I wish you people would stop saying that. Anything else you need of me, sir? No. But, uh, thank you, though. I will leave you two alone. Enjoy the rum. I will be by at dawn. Oh, and, uh, sir. You have privacy if you're worried about that fact. are dwindling before me. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to my grave with a head cold. You are soaking. Damn right. I want to go back home to my mother. I want to be five years old again. Five. You wouldn't be able to do this. This is so. There for you. No way. Let me think this out. I've exhausted all possibilities. I can't escape. The sergeant's too good a shot. Right. Even if I did manage to loot him, there's the garrison outside. British soldiers everywhere. So you can sit and sulk, or you can open up that bottle of rum and enjoy yourself. I'm going to kiss your lips and taste your life. I'm going to hear you breathe and sigh if I may. You may. And I hope I'll be enough to keep away the darkness and the fear. No. You'll not be able to keep away the darkness or the fear. But you will comfort me. There's much more any man can expect finding himself waiting for the gallows. You are a brave man. No, I'm not. I'm just happy that I'm able to get sexually aroused at this time. So I won't think of death so much. Nathan? Oh, God, I didn't know we're asleep. You mean, did you miss my execution? I'm still here. Come look at the star. I have a confession to make. You're only the second man I've ever made love to. Uh -huh. Roger and you. I'm not very experienced, but I tried acting French, as you suggested. Can we not talk about Roger? He's dead, Nathan. There's no reason to be jealous. I just wanted to say that I hope it went well for you. It was everything I thought of. the beauty in this world just the way the world turns and night changes into day i think we should pray for what for inspiration inspiration washington thinks that you should have some memorable last words to leave for posterity which which might encourage our side to win the war last words to leave for posterity 
<laughs> the man is incorrigible. I know what I'm going to say. I'm going to tell him that I'm innocent and let me go free. Please. Nathan, please, I beg of you for me. I, I wrote down some ideas. How's this one? My aunt suggested this one. Your aunt? It is a far better world I go to. It is a far better thing I do. Alice, I won't be caught dead saying something as trite as that for my last words. In fact, I don't want any last words. But don't you want to live in history? No. I want to live in New London. Well, Washington himself suggested this one. It is with heavy heart that I die for a just cause. Here, let me see this. Washington wrote this? Mm -hmm. Handed to me himself. Not only is he a lousy general, but the man has no literary skills. With heavy heart? That should rally the boys on for victory. I'm unhappy, Alice. I'm sorry, Nathan. These last few precious moments will be the last I will ever know. I can't believe that to be true. I'm never going to see you again, Alice Adams. I can't believe that to be true either. The best I can hope for is that my ghost will haunt you. Haunt me then. I will leave a candle glowing every night in my bedroom for you. You better stock up on candles because I have a premonition that you'll be living a long life. Sir, it is time. Unfortunately, your vote doesn't count. Just a second. Julie. Since it's going to be a short day, could you give Alice and I one more moment alone? Of course, sir. Trick. I don't think that if I've lived a million years, I could have loved anyone more than I loved you tonight. I'm going to tell them that I'm a rebel and a spy so that they can hang me with you. But, aren't you paying attention? Love has nothing to do with death. It has everything to do with life and living. Just be by my side and that will be proof enough. What is that? I want you to give this to General Howe. It fits all over. You will understand. I'm ready, Sergeant. Nathan. Be brave. She's a brave woman, sir. I wasn't talking to her. I was talking to myself. Sergeant, if I embarrass myself, will you promise to either nudge me with your musket or shoot me? I promise. the appropriate height. It'll be kicked out from under you. Have you ever done this before, sir? Thankfully, I have not. Promise, Marshal. Yes, sir. I smell whiskey. A fine brand of whiskey it is, sir. It's hot. I smell it, too. Why is that all? I had a cold. My cold is gone. Colds and other ailments man is heir to. Won't be much of a problem for you anymore. Thank you, sir. I assume it was meant in kindness. Sergeant, tie the prisoner's hands. I don't think the lady should witness this. I believe Alice will give you much agony if she doesn't. Captain Nathan Hale, you're sentenced to death 
This day, Friday, September the 22nd, 1776, for the crime of spying. Her execution will be carried out by Major Cunningham, the Provost Marshal of New York City. Thank you, sir. You don't have to thank me, son. Oh. I was just nervous and I thought I should say something. It is a pleasure to hang you. I dare say it won't be long before you're hanged yourself. Trust me, Provost Marshal. I have a premonition. Get up, the man. Provost Marshal! You stupid fool. You forgot to ask the prisoner if he had any last words. Hail. Do you have any last words? I do, sir. I do not believe in heroes. And I do not want to create the illusion that I'm going to my death gladly. The hardest thing in the world for an intelligent man to admit is that there's something in the world more important than him. And yet, that is what I had to do to allow you to hang me, sir. I'm not resisting. I'm not shouting down my executioner because I know there is something going on here that is more important than Nathan Hale. Maybe because I'm so close to death, I'm seeing all this so clearly, but when I look past the hangman's noose, I see a world that neither you nor I would recognize. <sighs> oh, I'd pay my taxes gladly if I could be around another 40 or so years to witness that. I know that these colonies we call America will forget my name as they should. And I know that in the future of this land, what is happening to me here today will happen again. And there will come along that poor soul who will be caught up in a situation beyond his control. And he will be singled out. Not because he wanted to be, but because time and events conspired against him. And he will die, be called a hero, when in truth, all he wanted was to live in peace and harmony. All people should. But you're not interested in what I have to say. Neither you nor Washington wants me alive. But I'll say this. That I die today for those who believe in the higher ideals of truth and justice. For those who despise bigotry and malice. For those who firmly believe beyond all doubt and cynicism that a country and a government can be created to pursue peace and harmony without war and destruction. And that land, that place in the mind and heart, that is my country. And I call that country, that America, mine. It will be mine in death as it always was in life. Invader, general of war, I allow you to take this action. And in doing so, I say to you that I regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. That is all, sir. You are valiant. If there are more like you on your side. I wonder if we'll win this war. I'm sure you won't, sir. It's just a premonition. Cunningham!
search the premises, Sergeant. I want to make sure Hale left nothing behind. Yes, sir. Peaceful place for Hale to spend his last hours. General. Nathan asked that I give this to you. He wrote it right before. I see. What does it say? Didn't he tell you? No. Is it Latin? It is. It says, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. What does it mean? The nursery rhyme? It means the man could write and speak Latin, which he denied. He didn't have to ask you to give me this. Perhaps he was trying to ease your conscience. You loved him, didn't you? More than you would dare to know. I'm sorry. But tell me, was he a spy? He had the personality for it. How so? He made people believe in him. War. Sometimes it's almost impossible to know the enemy. They could be in your very presence, and you wouldn't know it. That is so. Sergeant, get my things in order. We're moving north in pursuit of Washington. Miss Adams, I wish you good health. And I express my deepest sympathy. General Motors Playwrights Theater will return in a moment with Warren McCall. I want a car that makes that stretch of highway somewhere between fading radio stations seem safe or even familiar. One that lets us whistle down that endless asphalt welcome mat. You know, something that lets a guy and a gal comfortably pass the time. In all four. Get some gas. Fill it up. It's on us. <laughs> Today, GM is bringing you new designs, new engines, and an all new feeling of confidence. So don't buy a car or truck just because of where it's made. Buy it because of how it's made. And come see the changes we've made. I want a car where control isn't just in the palm of my hand, but also in the sole of my foot. Something to help keep me from skidding into whatever a slick road throws my way. like an expert you can brake like one because gm offers anti-lock brakes on more cars and trucks than anyone come see the changes we've made i want a car that feels like a reinforced steel security blanket one that could say don't worry i am dependable and safe one that lets me say sure kids you can borrow the car tonight that would be just fine at GM, safety isn't one thing, it's everything. A total safety system of over 100 different safety features that help you feel more secure when you're driving or when someone else is. Come see the changes we've made. We now return to General Motors Playwrights Theater. Richard Viteri says one of the reasons he wrote Hail the Hero was because he sees war as a great human tragedy where it is always the young who must die. He hopes that this play will make us think about how valuable life is and to measure our days, not with what has been conquered, but what has been learned. 
His fictional Nathan Hale serves that purpose very well. Thank you for joining us. Next Tuesday, Academy Award-winning composer John Williams conducts the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Get a front row seat for Live from the Hollywood Bowl. Sunday, what's behind his explicit lyrics and sexy style? Find out if the rumors are true as camera crews follow Prince into Paisley Park recording studios. A&E Premier Week gets off to a bang with Rave. Now stay tuned for A&E's An Evening at the Improv next.